They would always be like, oh, you want tacos? Well, I guess you want jack-in-the-box tacos. Here, here's a local favorite, jack-in-the-box. I'm like, no, no, no. I live in West Hollywood, okay? There are probably 1,500 local taco restaurants. Now let's watch this video, The Deceptive World of Ghost Kitchens. Progressed. Delivery apps like Uber Eats, Postmates, Grubhub, and DoorDash have exploded in popularity. And if you use these apps frequently, you've probably had an experience just like me since COVID started. You're not in the mood for anything particular that night. I'm so mad about this shit, dude. I've ordered from like 11 different fucking stores. Okay, with like 11 different names. It'll be like Golden China Teriyaki. It'll be like um, the best teriyaki joint. Chicken wings and teriyaki. Japanese teriyaki Golden China. And it's literally the same restaurant. It's always the same fucking restaurant. I'm like, what well, these? they're not even in the same area, according to Uber. It's straight up. The amount of times where I've had buffalo broccoli, okay? The amount of times I've had buffalo broccoli. I didn't order burritos. From the same goddamn, the exact same buffalo broccoli from like eight different restaurants. First world problems. I ordered complimentary salsa. I thought I ordered two burritos, but I ordered two orders of free salsa. So my order was actually zero dollars, but then there was the delivery charge and the under minimum charge of $11. So I paid $11. I paid $11 for salsa. Do you see this shit? I had, because it already comes, every order comes with complimentary salsa. And then I ordered two orders of complimentary salsa. I love that. That's fucking awesome. Anyway. There are two restaurants near me called Soul Kitchen and K-Town Kitchen. They're the same restaurant. Yeah. So you scroll through restaurant after restaurant looking for something that'll catch your eye. And one restaurant finally does. But not because it's what you're in the mood for. It's because something about this restaurant feels off. The app says it's 0.1 miles away, but you don't recall ever passing this store or seeing its storefront. And the pictures on the app don't look like a local restaurant near you. They almost look like stock photos. Even the restaurant name doesn't seem like a local family restaurant. It feels like something that would be on a neon sign in a white millennials taco restaurant. Something like Taco About It or Love Tacos or You're Tacoing Me Crazy. Now, some people might already be aware, as I... Dude, this music is fucking hilarious, though. Like, like motherfuckers playing the cyberpunk uh, or, or Blade Runner 2049 soundtrack behind, like, talking about... I love that. I was of what these restaurants are. But when I decided to make a video on it, the rabbit hole kept sinking deeper and deeper. So today, I want you to follow me down this rabbit hole uh. of food and restaurants but i must warn you it's sticky so i gotta pee. bring a baby wipe or some hand sanitizer or stand next to the sink and keep 912 on your monday from postmates to uber eats even grubhub more people skipping eating out and bringing the restaurant experience home but how that food is prepared is getting a big change. More competing companies are now teaming up using ghost kitchens to prepare your meals. Now, what is a ghost kitchen? Well, the definition can be a little bit broad and too general because the business model is very new and ghost kitchens come in a few different forms. But in YouTuber fashion, I have the Google definition. So apologies, I'm gonna sound for a second like a eighth grader giving a book report. The Google definition of a ghost kitchen is a business operating from low rent or non-commercial premises that prepares food ordered online for delivery 
delivery directly to customers, which is a true definition, but also doesn't sound like anything specific to me or give me a clear picture of what their business is. However, as I've been researching this video, I've boiled down ghost kitchens coming in mainly three different forms. Some take place in something called a virtual restaurant kitchen. Others make their food in mobile trailers and some are in existing restaurants. But I want to start with virtual restaurant kitchens. So a virtual restaurant is a restaurant that exclusively sells through delivery apps. The actual building it's made in is a virtual restaurant kitchen that houses many virtual restaurants. And nothing showcases one of these places better than this TikTok I found from a guy named Clayton who is delivering for Uber Eats. So this is what is called a ghost kitchen. It is a select set of restaurants that are featured uh, the food's cooked here. As an Uber Eats driver, you come up here, you select your restaurant. Mine was supposed to be Drunken Dumpling. And then my order was uh, Omar here. And what's crazy is then, you, uh, for right now I'm waiting, there's your order board. And then once that's ready, one of these lockers will unlock and the food will be ready. And this will become our future. I mean, it's You guys didn't know this? Place. Y'all thought this is, you, you weren't aware of this? I feel like we've like briefly covered this. <clears throat> yeah, this like started popping up, uh, popping off during COVID. Yeah. But this will become like every, all oh, food. Great. Yay, future technology. Now, there are definitely cases of one person owning a virtual restaurant kitchen, but these places are mainly owned by tech startups. So there is a chance that a pizza place that you get delivery food from and a Chinese food place that you also get delivery food from are not two separate restaurants, but one kitchen owned by the same company. But I yep. started to wonder how common these places actually were. And it's fucking awful. Like, the food quality is such dog shit, dude. It's crazy. Could I find one near my neighborhood? And I did. I won't be showing the address, but I sat down at my computer to look at delivery apps until I found a specific address that had multiple restaurants in it. And if you look here, as I started to go through just Uber Eats as an app, I started to find that this address had a lot of restaurants in it. If I were to ask you what you thought, Really nothing wrong with it. If the food is as, it'll die anyway. It cuts a ton of overhead and is very profitable. Yeah. A lot of restaurants running out of one kitchen would be. It kind of depends on how familiar you are with ghost kitchens and virtual restaurants. So you might be thinking, I don't know, two is a lot of restaurants. Potentially four. Could it be like five or six? So I counted the individual restaurants on Uber Eats. I think as long as there's no health code violations, which is probably impossible not to have in a situation like that, but as long as there's no health code violations, like I get it, it's like a food processing facility basically. And I suspect there will be health code violations. But for me, listen, man, I grew up on street food in Turkey, okay? If something tastes good, I'll eat it. I probably ate a fuck ton of pigeon meat, not realizing that I was eating pigeon meat, but it tasted delicious, okay? And my most... Like, the thing I hate the most is not necessarily the, the litany of health code violations, but instead, the fact that it tastes like fucking dog shit, and they deceived me! I wanted Golden China uh, Kitchen, okay? Or Golden China ki Chicken, one or the other. But they're both the same, and they both taste like doo-doo that came up for this specific address. And I found 10 restaurants running out of the same kitchen. Does that sound like a lot of kitchens to you? Because if it doesn't, I lied. There are 20 restaurants running out of this one location. Yeah, except like five of them are different named burger stores, which is something that I don't understand. Like, why is like five of them burgers? But they're just, they have like different names. And then the, the other five are Chinese food. The other five are like, the other five are Chinese. The other five are fucking, but they all make the same food. And if you're thinking to yourself, that's not that many. I lied again. There are 30 restaurants running out of this single location. And one final time, I lied again. There are 44 restaurants on Uber Eats that all share 
this one address. And you have food places ranging in completely different cultures and food types. There's a dim sum place, there's a curry place, there's burger places, pasta places, pizza places, chicken and waffles, taco places. Yes. This was actually discovered by my girlfriend Chrissy. She started looking at individual menus in this one location and finding that some of the items no, it's not a joke. really similar. So I picked a- Yes! Oh my God, I'm so glad this video exists. Oh my God, dude. I hate this shit so much. Dude, I could do, I, well, I have done a rant on Postmates back in the day because I fucking hate that, like, I'll be like, I want tacos, okay? And then Postmates, before, like, the ghost kitchen started popping off, which is a, yet another fucking annoying nuisance, they would always be like, oh, you want tacos? Well, I guess you want jack-in-the-box tacos. Here, here's a local favorite, jack-in-the-box. I'm like, no, no, no. I live in West Hollywood, okay? There are probably 1,500 local taco restaurants. Why the fuck are you so insistent on showing me Jack in the Box? Be like, oh, you said tacos. You must want Chipotle. I'll be like, no. And then they're like, oh, do you want this other Chipotle then? No. Okay, okay. How about this Chipotle that's like three miles away? And it's fucking psychotic. Like, no, man. No. No, 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 no. If Postmates, instead of probably getting paid a shitload of money by these massive fucking franchises to place them at the top of the fucking search bar, actually had like a better review system, okay? They would literally they used to go to the app. They would destroy it. But there is no competition there. It's like barely DoorDash has like a little bit of competition. Why are you guys throwing Pago on top of? It's the middle of the hour. There's only a secret one minute ad break here. Shut the fuck up. Don't Pago me. I'm not top of the hour. Because local places have to opt in to delivery services and it hurts their overhead. But, there are, but they are. They are in the fucking delivery services. And that's the worst part. When they're in the fucking delivery services, I, I want to find them. And I can't find them. Sometimes it makes it even harder to find them in, inside when I know the fucking restaurant's name. Random item from one of the restaurants that was featured here. It's a restaurant called The Codfather, and I found a beer-battered cod sandwich for $16.95. And right here it says in the description, it is a beer-battered North Atlantic cod, slaw, red and white cabbage, lemon herb aioli, and a brioche bun. So I looked at another obvious choice at the same address, at uh, Sunset Beach Fish and Chips, and would you look at that? There's a beer-battered cod sandwich for $16.95 that is a beer-battered North Atlantic cod, slaw, red and white cabbage, lemon herb aioli, and a brioche bun. Interesting. Two separate restaurants on Uber Eats appearing to be completely separate businesses selling the same item with the same I hate this! for the same price. So I looked at another place that had a beer battered cot for $16.95. Same description. And I looked at another place and another place <laughs> and Fish another burger. place until I had filled up my cart with nine identical beer battered cod sandwiches and I'm going to go with Chrissy to pick it up at the same exact location. That's right, we're gonna drive to one kitchen to pick up the same sandwich from nine separate restaurants. By the way, the sandwich is $16.95 for just the sandwich. So I'm about to pay, what's that times nine? But what's the point, illusion of choice? I just realized, you know what it is? You know what it is? You know what it is? They probably avoid extra scrutiny. You order from fucking fish and chips and you're like, oh, it sucks. Oh, ew, this place sucks. And then you order from beer bitch, okay? And they're like, oh, this place sucks too. And then you order from, uh, you know, I don't know, fish me out. And then you're like, oh my God, it's the same sandwich. What the fuck? One, they're avoiding additional scrutiny that you normally would get uh, if you're like a shit restaurant. Two, they've also flooded the marketplace with the same restaurant 11 times over. So now an actual fish and chips restaurant that isn't a part of the ghost kitchen is getting drowned out in the search engine. That's it. Yeah. Holy shit, I just noticed Uber Eats and Postmates mobile UI is identical. Brother, they're owned by the same company. Uber bought Postmates. 
I'm not, I'm going to do it in a calculator. You can't force me to do math off the top of my head. I could have done it now, but I need to find my phone. All right, so if I just do the quick math on here before fees are involved, I will be paying just $152.55 to potentially try the same sandwich nine times. <sighs> So Chrissy and I started the drive. It took about, I don't know, 20 minutes to get there. Oh my God, that was beautiful. Was say when we pulled up to the restaurant, it had the name Chibo. What confused me is that when you look it up, Chibo is a local restaurant in LA. It's been open since 2002, I believe. But when you look on Google Street View, the storefront used to say Virtual Dining Concepts, which is one of the startups in the ghost kitchen industry. Now, to be honest, as we walked up, I was a little bit nervous because I don't think one of their regular employees would care, but I also doubt somebody has ordered from nine different restaurants with the same item. The order kind of makes it obvious what I'm doing. So I walked up to him and said, Hi, we're picking up for like nine orders under Eddie. And the guy was like, oh yeah, no problem. Uh, uh, do you want me to put it all in one bag? Is that okay? So we waited for a little bit. Here's us waving just in case we're saying hello to you specifically watching. We're waving to you. And then finally we got the order. So I gotta get home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed so casual. They did not care that we ordered from nine different places and it was the exact. Yeah, no, he, he has no idea nor any care nor any consideration to this process exact same one so we drove back bags in hand left bag hanging lower than the right bag but before we bust these bags wide open a quick word from our sponsor thank you all for coming to this press briefing today as many of you already know i am now the president of the united states because to the video when we got back and I started to unpack them, I noticed that all of the packaging was the exact same. All right, so let's start with just two of them. Okay. I think the biggest crime of this is that he like, the, the biggest crime of this is that he just fucking got fish sandwiches instead of something else. The rest of the package is right here, but they also weren't labeled, so I have no idea which two restaurants these are from. This could be The Codfather. This could be Sunset Beach. This could even be Burger Bitch. Uh, first one is in this wrapping. Here's the, I mean, it looks good. It looks good. It, this looks like a good fish sandwich. These are two different fish sandwiches from two different restaurants. Legally, I do not want to say that these are the same sandwich, so I won't do that. You think that, that covers me? The, ch the bun feels cheap for $16. Oh, yeah. It's good. I now know what this fish sandwich tastes like. Legally, I don't want to say that this is the exact same sandwich. But my taste buds are saying this is the exact same sandwich. Then we decided to take every single sandwich out to show them all at once. What we are looking at here are nine sandwiches from nine restaurants that all claim to be different businesses when you look at them. And I decided- What's funny is that they at least like posted different photos. A lot of these places don't even do that. For science, I was going to take a bite of every single fish sandwich and give a thumbs up if it tasted. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Capitalism breeds innovation, by the way. Uh, yet another one of my, uh, uh, a, a fantastic thing to bring up. Uh, literally just, this is the type of fucking innovation Similar that capitalism to the breeds all the one. time. Now, as I've aged, I don't do as well with greasy foods, specifically something like a fish or chicken sandwich. And I can't tell you the toll that this took on my body later that day. I didn't even capture it. I was tired. Things happened in the bathroom I will never speak of ever again. But I will say that my opinion was these nine sandwiches tasted exactly the same to me but i think it's really important to mention that this restaurant is it's the dumbest way to be innovative but it is innovative law no it, it isn't it's not real innovation it's literally just the only way that capitalism is innovative is by making the same product and like using or finding new ways to scam people into thinking that you're buying a different product and and making more money off of it the innovation is called scamming Okay, you just said, oh, but I love, I love the scam. Uh, I, it's, it's innovative scamming. 
taking up 44 slots on delivery apps. They are competing directly with small businesses, some of which are owned by families. Now, I don't know if Chibo the restaurant owns this or if Virtual Dining Concepts bought Chibo to use their name as a brand, but would you be surprised to learn that there is another Chibo within four miles of the one that I just showed you? And together they take up 77 restaurant slots on Uber Eats. So whether or not Chibo is its own new company or just a... Okay, I'm beginning to realize that I've been Chiboed like a thousand times. ...front for virtual dining concepts, I want to take a second to talk about VDC. Virtual Dining Concepts, or VDC, is a major ghost kitchen company. And when you go to their website, they have a collection of brands that they work with. You have Mr. Beast Burger, which we will talk about later. You have Phase Subs, which finally answers the question, can my sandwiches just be made by gamers? But as I was reading the brands, <laughs> something caught my eye. NASCAR Refuel. So I clicked on it and it opened up NASCAR Refuel Wings and you could go right to their website. So clearly, NASCAR Refuel is a NASCAR themed ghost kitchen that sells primarily bone-in wings. Hell yeah, now if you go brother. to the full menu, you can see that they offer five flavors. We've got barbecue, we've got honey garlic, we've got sweet chili, Cajun, and buffalo. Mmm, my tummy's already rumbling. Is that a magnitude seven earthquake in California? No, that's just my tummy for NASCAR wings. They even come in this fun little NASCAR box so you know the food's gonna get to you fast. So then I thought, you know, if VDC can let NASCAR make a unique wing place, this place can't be that bad. By the time food arrives to your table at a restaurant, you know, the people who have made the food have already jumped through a ton of hoops. The person who created the business already had the idea to create a Honest question, do you think people who give so little of a shit to order online cares anything about local restaurants? I'm one of those people, and yes, the answer is yes, of course I do. You wanna know why? Because yummy in my tummy, that's why. Life is oftentimes just an endless sea of L taking, okay? And in between jumping from one L to the other, sometimes you nut and that feels good. And other times you eat food and that feels also just as good, maybe better, okay? So yes, I do care. What the fuck do you mean, dude? What? Restaurant either paid their own money or got a loan from a bank to get the building rented out. They then had to hire people, make sure everybody was trained, make sure people liked the menu, cultivate a successful business and pay the bills every month. So maybe this could be a good way to not gatekeep recipes with how much influence you have or how much capital you have to open up a restaurant. Maybe this will be a great way into having people try new foods. Hmm. VDC has another wing place right there called Wing Squad. Wing Squad is a buffalo wing themed ghost restaurant that serves primarily bone-in bone -in wings with flavors like barbecue, honey gar- Didn't Tyga do this too, ironically? What the fuck is right or wrong with it? You sound extra angry and extra funny when you're on this topic. Dude, this is one that like, this is literally capitalism and food. It's like two things that I love talking about you know what i mean of course i'm passionate i love eating food and i love talking about how fucking shitty capitalism is especially when capitalism ruins my food of course i'm gonna be angry and passionate garlic sweet chili cajun and buffalo are these the exact same fucking wings Okay, so I got NASCAR Refuel. So I was gonna immediately cut to ordering NASCAR Refuel and Wing Squad to eat them both and see if they tasted exactly the same. But when I filled out both my orders, I went ahead and ordered NASCAR Refuel. And when I tried to check out with the cart for Wing Squad, they told me that it wasn't available in my area. So now, instead of proving a point for my video, I just have NASCAR wings. The only thing I care about is if they come in the cool box. I will be so mad if they don't. Yes! Here are the wings. They look pretty good, to be honest. I'll give it to NASCAR. It's good. It's good. I never said the ghost kitchen food is bad. It's good. 
I scared the neighbor's dog. But I want to get back to VDC's website because they seem to be the leading brand in working with content creators and celebrities to create ghost franchises. Hi, I'm Robert Earl, a fellow restaurateur and the founder of Virtual Dine. I thought he said his name was Roberto, like Roberto, but said in a British way. That would have been way funnier, honestly. Dining concept. A ghost franchise is when one of these companies utilizes virtual restaurants and ghost kitchens around the country to instantly start up a national brand. So you pretty much snap your fingers and you have a fast food company across the whole country. These brands offer you an A to Z solution. All Bro, this is literally, okay. I'm about to tell you guys something very scary, okay? or. I guess I kind of talked about it on Leftovers. There's a reason why everyone wants to be a t-shirt salesman nowadays, okay? There's a reason why everyone wants to be an influencer. Because when you're an influencer, you can sell, okay? You can sell products to a massive audience of loyal fans, okay? And people have realized like, oh yeah, you can have like a built-in marketing thing. Uh, if you work with influencers, celebrities, yada, yada, so basically, this originally started with like white glove production, a normal concept for, uh, you know, drop shipping or whatever, uh, a normal concept where like drop shipping companies to work with celebrities, uh, represent used to do this and still does this. Okay. The company I work with is a, is another version of this. That's a, a you know, on hands, like the ideology product that you can purchase. Okay like the t-shirt that I'm wearing at ideology.shop is quite literally kind of like the ghost kitchens of this, except the difference is, I guess you can have a little bit more involvement in the process of manufacturing, but that's it. It's white label production, right? Now they've moved that into kitchens with this streamlined process. PFT is a part of Barstool's ghost kitchen, part of my cheesesteak. <laughs> People also want to be influenced because there's 0% chance of making a good living as a public servant rather than take a bet on making it big than admitting you will never be comfortable. Well, I mean, of course. Yeah. That too. All you have to do is choose the brands, the great celebrities that are going to become your market partners with you. And to get a look on how these ghost franchises start, we can look at the page on their website that advertises to creators that want to work with them. So this business model is advertised as a new way to connect with fans. Oh my God, I didn't know. Oh, the other thing, the other thing, the other thing that it, like uh, prior versions of this would be like, there are. Oh. Yeah, I've talked about this already. Uh, I mean, I, I... Hassan lives in a mansion. You should let some homeless people live in his extra rooms. Um, I, I have... I have talked about... I mean, no, I've talked about this. Sorry. I I, I know that a, a prior version of this exists as well. Like when, when Subway used to do like a, like a marketing thing with like a celebrity. You know what I mean? You do, you let XQC say, yeah, I know, 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 I know. So it's basically franchisees except with different names and the illusion that they're not the same business. Exactly. I ratio Joe Biden. Really? Yeah. McDonald's did it with Travis Scott, right? The Travis Scott burger. And then it worked so well that they did it with Cardi B. Cardi B and Offset Mickey D's meal. They're doing the same shit. Subway still does it too. Right? But this time, you get to act like you own the entire fucking restaurant. You know, it was for the fans. So step one is to create your vision. They give you a more intimate and experimental way to connect with your followers. Finally, I can get intimate with Mr. Beast by shoving a Beast Burger or Carl's Deluxe down my gullet. Just hey. absolutely gargling. No, no making fun of Carl's Deluxe. Beast style fries. Then you work with them to create a menu. I would assume it's more so like, hey, you want to sell pizza? Do you oh want to sell I... pepperoni or sausage? Then they say to market the brand. Oh, fuck. I ratioed the president. Oh, my God. Connect with your... F That's sick. Dude, I ratioed the president. That's fire. About to have the Secret Service come knocking down my door, bro. Anyway. Follow Carl. 
Then you work with them to create a menu. I would assume it's more so like, hey, you want to sell pizza? Do you want to sell pepperoni or sausage? Then they say to market the brand, to use your social following and platform to connect with your fans beyond merchandise. Use the food in your content. See guys, it's about connecting to fans. This is not a soulless way to cash in on your fans by selling them food that you didn't create, okay? It's not about making money. So let's see step four. I gotta stop getting tricked by corporate speak. I thought Mr. Beast wanted to be intimate with me. Sounds like your friend Ray's involvement in skincare products. Brother. Brother. Are you really that mentally ill? Like, really? Really? Like, how many, what, what was it, two years ago? How many years? Was it two years ago? It was two years ago, right? Literally two years ago, she, she fucking, she literally immediately canceled a product partnership that she had with a makeup brand which then they took the project on and didn't even change the name and work with another person with the name Ray, Addison Ray, and nobody gave a shit about it. That's crazy. She didn't even sell them, you fucking dingus. That's crazy. Aren't you a proud owner of the product, though? Hmm, I am. It's behind me somewhere. I mean, it, it's like funny. It's funny to meme about, but goddamn, dude. Deep cut. Me. I can't believe how confusing this ghost kitchen stuff is as a consumer. Because a few minutes after filming this, I got an email thanking me for my order from Mr. Beast Burger. The thing is, I didn't order from Mr. Beast Burger. I'm doing that later when I talk about Mr. Beast Burger. So I looked at the address in the email and it happens to be the exact same address from where I got my NASCAR refuel wings. So they just thanked me for ordering from a completely different restaurant. And when I looked up the address, it just gave me Universal City Walk, which is the big mall outside of Universal Studios Hollywood. It didn't even match up with one of the restaurants there. It just looked like a vague point on one of the buildings. Did they make my wings in Universal Studios? Did the Minions make my wings? It seems like VDC can't even keep track of their own virtual restaurants. But if you're a content creator or a celebrity that thought it would be a cool idea to open up your own fast food brand, that doesn't inherit. I don't think does Mr. B's work with VDC. I doubt it. I feel like he has enough. I feel like he has enough money to like make his own, right? I don't think he does. Does he? This is proving it. I work with Uber Eats in that part of the valley. So many ghost kitchens. Steve Aoki has a bunch of pizza restaurants out of ghost kitchens. Dude, it's the first thing on their website. That's wild. Mr. B's is Red Robin. God damn. He really just showed he does. I thought he would have done his own ghost kitchen. Like, literally. It seems like you would make more profits that way. Rather than just, like, if your goal is to generate profit, when I've seen Mr. Beast is with others in a ghost kitchen like this, that makes sense. Or maybe he works on some locations. I've seen people say the quality of the burgers varies on depending on the location. Yeah, see, because like someone is saying my Red Robin doubles as a Mr. Beast Burger. So I wonder if VDC also works with different local restaurants or franchises that are like underwater to like utilize their kitchen as well. You know what I mean? make you the devil. I mentioned three types of ghost kitchens before, and one of them is existing restaurants. Now these restaurants can be major chains or small businesses, and running these virtual restaurants out of a small business might help them keep the lights on. That additional revenue could be a lifesaver for them. The thing is, as I've been looking up stuff for this video, I would frequently get so lost trying to keep track of all the virtual restaurants. It would be hard to count how- Wait, actually, Buca de Beppo is the one that doesn't near me? Shut the fuck up. Wait, what? Dude, what the fuck? You should sell lettuce and call it Hasanabi Heads or a brothel called Hasanabi Head? Yeah, let me do fucking, let me become a pimp, dude. Buca de Beppo has fucking ghost kitchens? Isn't that like, isn't that like a relatively upscale uh, franchise? Like, I thought it was like, what the fuck? It's not? I don't know. Uh. 
how many virtual restaurants are in one location, or where a virtual restaurant was located. Sometimes I would look up Mr. Beast Burgers in my area, and when I went to the street view, they just didn't exist and also didn't have an address listed. And that's when I started to think, if I'm spending all day just trying to locate certain restaurants, how the hell are they doing health inspections for these places? Uh-oh. And that's when I stumbled on an article called Do You Know Where Your Chicken Wings Come From by the Boston Globe. The article centers around- I'm gonna, I'm gonna point this out one more time. I don't even give a fuck if it gave me explosive diarrhea. As long as it tasted good. Straight up. I, I, like, I don't even care if it poisoned me. If it tastes good, I'm fucking in it, baby. I'm in there like swimwear. Do not give a fuck. But the worst part of this is not that it's food poisoning. It's that it tastes bad. Okay? That, I cannot, I, like, literally, I'm not even, I'm not even joking about this. The worst part about this is that it doesn't taste good. It's the same dog shit copied and pasted over and over and over and over and over again. I was literally eating with the sushi restaurant near me. Bubble gut every time was so tasty. Actually, your worst take. Y'all are crazy. Around the challenges that ghost kitchens have added to health inspection agencies in Massachusetts. Frequently, it seems that health inspectors in Massachusetts will find out during the health inspection that they're running multiple restaurants out of the same kitchen. Lexington's health director, Joanne Bellinger, even said, it's like smoke and mirrors or a shell game. We license this particular restaurant, but on the side, they're running six or seven other things. And they're constantly getting surprised by this because the article states, no one knows how many such operations operations are running in Massachusetts or nationwide, as there is no central entity that tracks them. And when health departments can't track where food is coming from, it makes it near impossible to track where a foodborne illness starts. Some defenders of virtual kitchens might say, well, if you have a kitchen that passed a health inspection, what's the harm in adding a virtual kitchen? You already passed. But what if your new virtual restaurant what? menu- What? Bro, what do you mean? There's contaminants! Oh my god, cross-contamination events! Yeah, literally! Bro. Okay, if you have food allergies, do not order from any anything on Uber, okay? Okay, that 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 part, I, I am very privileged. I do not have any allergies that I know of, and I hope I don't develop any allergies. Oh, my God. That is definitely one thing. Okay, 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 okay. To be fair, to be fair, yes, I wouldn't want to die if I had, like, a fucking peanut allergy and I'm ordering from a place that I don't think is it has peanuts in the kitchen, okay? Then, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. I am pro regulations. You're right. I forgot about people who are allergic to things. If you have a peanut allergy, do you never want to like sometimes try like, I don't know, five guys and stuff. There's a really, I mean, I mean, think about it. Like it's, there's a lot of delicious foods that you're missing out on dies from the ghost kitchen. <laughs> I was allergic to mango until my twenties. Now I eat a lot of them. Goofy ass family allergy. Wait, do you think that's why Ethan has like an allergic reaction when he ordered like a whole bunch of Mr. Beast burgers? Like he's about to find out through his dermatologist that he has like a different allergy and it was definitely not one of the Mr. Beast burgers. Like it's not a product that's supposed to be in the Mr. Beast burger. Adds an allergen that your original menu didn't have. You now need to be inspected again to make sure you're not cross-contaminating and feeding somebody something they're allergic to. And not only is the FDA struggling nationwide to keep up with this technology. In spring of 2022, Needham's health department encountered a Thai restaurant that the department had closed for repeated health violations <laughs> that then opened up as a virtual Thai restaurant under a new name. And this isn't just Massachusetts. ABC7 Chicago discovered something similar in their reporting. Uh -oh. But what if your food comes from a restaurant with health violations. The I-team found restaurants with some of the most serious violations. The Buffalo Wild Wings on 513 West Taylor Street near the South Loop houses the ghost restaurant Wild Burger. The restaurant had recent failing inspections with violations including 100 fruit flies throughout the establishment and no soap at a hand washing sink. In follow-up reports, the restaurant fixed violations and passed inspection. It's really just a snowball with ghost kitchens because this problem also opens up a new problem, which is major restaurant brands pretending to be smaller businesses on delivery apps to get more <laughs> business from you. That's Next so fucked. list of fake-ass restaurants, you can tell. Look at the graphics. It's up. Super Megadilla. Oh, my God. Super Megadilla 
and thrilled cheese. Yes. Both, IHOP. both of these have the same address and it's IHOP. What I want to know is how the fuck am I supposed to eat that as a fucking quesadilla when it's a full blown fucking avocado and a full blown fucking chicken tender? I can't believe that IHOP would do this. Surely no other major brands have done the exact same thing. Maggiano's Italian classics. This comes from Chili's. It's Just Wings also comes from Chili's. Tender Shack comes from Outback Steakhouse. So I guess we have a new problem to worry about. Sometimes the virtual restaurant isn't even real, and sometimes I guess now it's Chili's. I've been researching for this. Okay, I will take that over fucking, you know, poisonous Thai food from a restaurant that was uh, forced to be closed before, though. Because, like, at least Chili's is, like, kind of bomb, you know what I mean? It's still indecent on the, on the you know, capitalism uh, competition front because it's, like, a corporation that is, like, literally trying to eliminate the competition like you would want to eliminate the top of the hour ad break at the top of the hour and uh, unlike Chili's you can do that just for five dollars right there's also mild food allergy the millions have without knowing their lips tingle and swell up a bit when they eat fresh fruit it's called a oral allergy syndrome and it's so common wait I have this wait really are you serious? Is that that's an allergy, or are you just fucking with me? I hate fruit because whenever I have fruit, whenever I have fruit, like my mouth is like almost in pain. What the fuck? I mean, I still eat it every now and then, but it makes your mouth itchy, though, right? Kind of. Yeah, pineapples. Yeah, can't eat too much pineapples. Yeah. What the fuck? I thought it was like, I don't know what it is. It's like mostly, it only, it mostly happens with, no, 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 no. It happens with citrusy shit. I don't think it's an allergy. I don't think it happens with other fruit or maybe it does. I don't know. I don't really eat that many fruit. That's the enzyme, you dummy. Pineapple is because of the enzyme, not allergy. But it's not just pineapple. It's like citrusy shit. It's the protein digesting enzyme. The only reason why I'm saying pineapple, kiwi, pineapples, apples, strawberries are most common. Okay, those are also the only like fruit that I do eat. So maybe it is. One of my friends was like, you know how when you eat a pineapple, your mouth gets numb? I was like, nah, dog, you have an allergy? Wait, what the fuck? You already found out about this a while ago. What the fuck, old man? Go check your brain for the German one. Is you're going to the doctor already? What do you mean? This video for around two months now, and I feel like I'm going crazy. Because anytime I'm confused or I see something deceiving and I pursue it, I get even more confused and sometimes even more deceived. However, there is one thing that I am certain of. Every single day. I have researched or filmed or gone to get food from one of these ghost kitchens. One virtual restaurant will make itself known at least once. A ghost franchise that is so popular that any YouTube addicted 12 year old would know the menu by heart. In this story, I'm the beauty and this restaurant is... Wait, I talked about this on stream before? Mr. Beast Burger is one of, if not the most popular ghost franchise in the United States. The ghost franchise was created by YouTube's golden boy and Elon Musk reply guy, Jimmy Donaldson, AKA Mr. Beast. We will be spending 24 hours in this insane asylum. I built two massive circles and put 100 boys in one and 100 girls in the other. I am not eating any food for the next 30 days. The reason I've waited so long to talk about Mr. Beast Burger is because it utilizes all three main forms of ghost kitchens, including trailers. Ghost kitchen trailers are exactly what they sound like. They're a trailer that runs multiple virtual restaurants out of it. Now the leading company that owns these trailers seems to be Reef Global. But as I've been reading some articles about it, it seems like Reef isn't doing so hot lately. They've had a lot of big companies pull business from them. It even looks like Wendy's had a projected 500 locations set to open, but they cut that deal and Reef later exited its Houston market and laid off 5% of its workforce amid low sales and a rash of permitting and safety violations. 
Let me just look up what safety violations there are. Okay, so I just found this Wall Street Journal article called Ghost Kitchens Are Proving to Be a Messy Business as Reef Global Shows. The article starts by saying a few seconds after a cook turned on a stove in a tiny mobile kitchen in a Houston parking lot in April, a fireball erupted from the propane burners, flaring out into the center of the trailer owned by Reef Global Inc. While the cook escaped harm, she happened to open a refrigerator at the same time that shielded her from the flames. It was the second such incident at the same Houston trailer in four months. The first one injured a different cook as flames scorched her face and gave her... Um, kind of a warning for this to be kind of violent language, so skip forward 10 seconds if you don't want to hear this. Gave her third degree burns on her hands that caused the skin to peel off her fingers, rendering her unable to work. Wall Street Journal. Did you hear how bad her hands got burnt? How can she work? How can she contribute to the company? A similar fireball uh -huh. in San Francisco injured another Reef employee in the spring, according to the former Reef managers briefed on the three incidents. And on top of that, there's also an insider article about leaked Reef emails, where they're talking about nearly a full year of complaints from Mr. Beast Burger, where customers were served uncooked chicken and raw burgers. This is not directly Mr. Beast's fault, and I'm sure this happens with regular fast food franchises. But this problem is a lot more difficult to solve when you have no real locations. And up until very recently, this business was solely run out of ghost kitchens. And in interviews, Jimmy doesn't hide that fact at all. He's actually one of the only people I see being open and honest about their business and ghost kitchens. Is it cool to own a burger joint? So when I first started it, this is when COVID was at its height. So we started a virtual restaurant. A lot of restaurants were laying people off. And Beast Burger, originally why we got into it, is it was like a way for restaurants to make extra money. Yeah. So if you're a mom and pop and, you know, that lockdowns, you can't even serve people in your fucking restaurant, your revenue just cut, cut in half, you could just start serving Beast Burger. And then anytime anyone within eight miles placed an order, you fulfill it, you get to keep a majority of the revenue. Yeah. Now that's a pretty noble motivation to opening up Mr. Beast Burger. But Jimmy just doesn't talk about the fact that they do this also out of existing restaurants that are major corporations and the fact that they ran them out of reef trailers. Anyone anywhere can just start serving Mr. Beast Burger. You just take our training course, order our ingredients and packaging, and then turn it on on all the websites. So it's the same ingredients. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it tastes the same. Mm -hmm. And I understand what Jimmy's trying to do, but you really shouldn't make it that accessible for anyone anywhere to start serving Mr. Beast Burger to customers. Because again, I start thinking about the health inspection stuff. People all over the country, primarily kids. Are I'm sure all of his restaurants are mom and pops. I think like uh, that's probably beneficial for the the mediator in that situation. And I don't think Mr. Beast gives a fucking shit. You know what I mean? They were overpriced and extre tasted extremely mid in Toronto. I have never had a Mr. Beast burger. Uh, I most likely will not be having a Mr. Beast burger anytime soon. Brand risk for sure. Your name is on the burger. I I worry you'll actually read one of my shitty comments and permaban me. I'm kidding. They absolutely are not Lamau. Yeah, no, I know. I I I assume that like. Uh, this is just literally straight up yet another way to fucking generate revenue. Like it is, it is a, a way to generate revenue for pre-existing brands, for pre-existing franchises. Of course, are eating this food. Ultimately, though, and I gotta fucking, I gotta repeat this over and over again. If they fucking slapped, I don't give a shit. As long as you know they are, are also maintaining safety standards. That's it. But the, we but the reason why I don't eat it is because, like, as much as I've seen it, like, it doesn't. You might want to talk to Will about how you're not eating a Mr. Beast burger. We are not eating a Mr. Beast burger. There is no shot, brother. Food cannot slap. Yes, it can. At the top of the hour, the fucking ad break slaps you in the face. Okay? Which I feel like in my brain, I already did this segue. And I did not run it. Oh, I guess I did the segue, but I f forgot to run it then. Because I was like, I think I did a really good segue, but forgot to run the ad break. Yeah. Okay. Here. I'm running it now. Because I was looking at, because it shows you your activity. Look. Last ad break I ran was a 60 second commercial ad break in 40 minutes ago. And then I just ran the hour ad break, top of the hour ad break. 
happened. You need to have some kind of barrier for the quality of it. And so he's sort of transparent about the Ghost Kitchen stuff in interviews, but let's also look at what he actually told his fans. When the business opened in 2020, this is how it was announced to 144 million people. Bro, I'm one of those people. Like, until, until recently, I thought this shit, like, I never watched a Cody interview. I'm one of the fucking people. I literally thought he, like, opened up a burger joint. I opened up the world's first free restaurant. And if that wasn't enough, I also paid people to eat at my restaurant. Put it on up. Yeah! And I've never ran a restaurant before. Bye! And that was our last customer. If you like what you saw in this video, you too can eat beast burgers. I literally just opened 300 restaurants all across America. But we only serve people through delivery apps. Basically, open up whatever you use and search Mr. Beast Burger. And you could order anything from our amazing and delicious menu. And like I said, we have hundreds of locations all across America. Just open up your favorite delivery apps and search Mr. Beast Burger. So while this isn't a direct lie, I would have liked him to be less vague about opening 300 locations. Because this is the Mr. Beast Burger that 144 million people saw. Complete with its own branding and even a drive through And this is the Mr. Beast Burger that I just ordered from. The small business was connected to this building and when I went in, they didn't even realize that an Uber Eats order for Mr. Beast Burger had come through. Obviously, it appeared as their own business. There was no Mr. Beast branding anywhere. They told me it was gonna be a 20 minute wait, so I went back to the car to wait with Chrissy. Do you think if we ask them, they'll sign this? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I really hope. When I finally went back in and was handed the bag, I noticed that it wasn't a Mr. Beast Burger bag. It was one of those regular thank you bags. Regardless, we headed home, bag in hand, bag hanging low. This is literally a byproduct of just straight up streamlining this process. Quality control is gone. You're like... For all of its faults and failures, like at least McDonald's has like super severe, sometimes like uh, sometimes very strict, too strict uh, franchising rules, right? Like literally all of these like fast food chains, fast food franchises have like insane rules, which by the way, ironically, they make money off of like McDonald's utilizing uh, or McDonald's forcing contracts on ice cream machines, which is why ice cream machines are always fucking broken. You know what I mean? O upon their franchisees. So like they're maxing out on the fucking profits. McDonald's is not a burger uh, place. It's a, it's a real estate company. I've about Mick fucking had it with the ghost kitchens in my area. It's out of control. Fuck McDonald's. No condiments giving ass. Wait, really? I got four items total and ordered it for pickup, so the whole thing ran me 36. It is taking artisanal mode of production in the restaurant and turning it into a central factory, exactly how Marx described production being forced into this form. They're also not in Mr. Beast packaging either. So, Mr. Beast, NASCAR wings is blowing you out of the fucking water. Now, B-style fries are supposed to be seasoned, crinkle-cut fries loaded with caramelized onions, American cheese, pickles, mayo, ketchup, and mustard. What I got was seasoned crinkle cut fries with cooked onions, American cheese, pickles, and ketchup. You can see right here, this is what they look like and- oh. So oh. I flipped them back over pretty well actually, it worked out just fine. And they were average. I do think what would make this order special is the ingredients on the fries and I didn't get all that I ordered, but this is the best that the order's gonna get, I promise you. Now the next item on the list was supposed to be a Carl's no! Deluxe, which is like a patty melt grilled cheese. No! But when I pulled it out, I was very confused. Which, is this the Beast Burger? After looking at all of the order later, this was not a B-style burger. It was no! not Carl's Deluxe. It was one of their Impossible B-style burgers. This is what the Impossible B-style burger is supposed to look like. And this looks like if somebody drew a- It looks like a cartoon. Dude, it looks like, oh no. That looks like a prop, dude. Oh my Lord. Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh, geez. a burger for me? How is this real? It looks like a Krabby Patty. Now, when I <laughs> it literally it up, it does. Really boring. This looks unbelievably boring. 
but surprisingly, it also tasted really boring. This tastes like a cafeteria burger. The Impossible Burger is supposed to be smashed crispy Impossible patties with house seasoning, American cheese, pickles, diced white onions, mayo, ketchup, and brown mustard on a toasted bun. What I got was an Impossible patty, American cheese, shredded lettuce, and a tiny bit of ketchup. There's no sauce on it either. There's just like a little bit of ketchup. Yeah, there's no quality control, dude. There's no quality control whatsoever. So when there's no there's no quality control, there's nothing like you it's like almost impossible to do quality control too. Like <coughs> dude, that that looks like a blood stain, brother. I wouldn't eat that. On the bun. The bun was way cheaper than the one looks in the photo. But also if you examine the meat in the impossible photo, it looks nothing like this. So what the hell did I just eat? Next up was the crispy chicken tender sandwich. And this one is an easy layup. Everybody knows what comes on a chicken sandwich. It's just chicken, the bun, mayo, no, pickles, no ketchup. and lettuce. No ketchup. I was really hoping I would have a positive experience, but all Why of ketchup? the ingredients just feel really, really cheap. Like it just this doesn't look like a satisfying chicken sandwich. I don't know. It's so dry. What I got was the chicken tender, some shredded lettuce, and a tiny bit of ketchup. I mean, I think this is literally just people being able to get away with, like, serving lower quality shit because of the marketing associated with it. But there is 0% chance that this is, like, like once the gimmick is over or because of how hit or miss it is, like I suspect that at a, I wonder if the gimmick itself like plays into it because like, it seems like, it seems like you're like you, you think maybe you have a pop-up kitchen somewhere. You have a Mr. Beast burger, maybe at a different place. And you're like, Oh, it actually tastes good. Or one of your friends has a Mr. Beast burger somewhere where they actually make like a decent one. And then you fucking turn around and you order it at home, boom, you, you just paid. You paid for that, but it was dog shit. You know what I mean? Like, you'll never order from there again. Because I've heard this too. Like, people, people say, like, I've heard this as well. Ours is actually really good. Like, because you're probably getting it from maybe not like a local mom and pop shop that doesn't really give a shit at that point. They're just, like, fucking trying to make ends meet. And instead, you're getting it from, like, a Red Robin, which at least has, like, some level of quality control, I think, even though Red Robins are dog shit, too. You know what I mean? These look like vending machine sandwiches being reviewed. Okay, first of all, the vending machine sandwiches, well, not vending machines, but, like, 7-Eleven sandwiches slap, dude. Ethan's review he did was better than both this video and the other time he reviewed it on the pod. The food was actually branded. Cooler boxes. Food was better, better but still rough. Lastly, we had the main event. The very item that carries the name of this ghost franchise. The Beast Style Burger. And man, this one kind of pissed me off because I ate it. And while I've been editing it, I noticed that the camera got a better angle of the meat than I did. Man, this is supposed to be a smash burger. What the hell is this? Now, when it comes to Mr. Beast Burger, do I think that Jimmy was intentionally trying to mislead lead people in his video or that he ever wanted to serve people uncooked beef no of course not jimmy is a little bit younger than me i think he's like 24 but he's also ceo brained so i'm pretty sure he doesn't give much thought to anything but making the biggest videos in the world and growing his company however i will say that the quality of that food was really bad that i think i think this is an incredibly fair assessment yeah Literally. It was probably, no exaggeration, the blandest fast food I've ever had in my entire life. So I think my one piece of advice to Mr. Beast that he's not going to listen to because I have less subscribers than him is just give a little bit more thought into the businesses that you're running because the ghost kitchen stuff is really like the wild west of food. And there are a lot of really young, impressionable people watching what you do. So you just got to be a little bit careful with the businesses that you run. But that really got me thinking about the psychology of the ghost kitchen business. It really seems that a large form of this business is based on deception. And I started to wonder, how easy would it be to trick people into eating food that they've already had, but make them think that it's a brand new restaurant? It seems to happen every single day. We saw it with IHOP and Chili's earlier. So to test this out, I decided to pay thousands of dollars 
to do a real legitimate focus group in Los Angeles. Now to do this, I would need my own virtual restaurant with its own branding. My name is Eddie Burback, so let's go with something like Eddie's Burgers or, or Burback's Burgers. Burger, bur, bur, burger back, burger back. I also needed a fake logo to put on the pack. Why didn't he fucking sell it as bareback burgers, dude? Missed opportunity. Eddie bareback. You want to hit that burger raw. You want to raw dog food. that burger. So I'm pretty new to graphic design, but I worked like, I don't know, maybe three or four days on this logo. I think I did a really great job. There actually might be a path for me in graphic design and not uh, in YouTube anymore. So the, I'm sorry. I'm just very proud of it. As the group entered the room, I realized that I had put up thousands of dollars and the entire point I'm trying to Wait, make the fuck? on the that's, results of this focus group. That's so a my nerves were high. Hi everyone. That's that's Jack's films, right? Uh, thank you all for uh, coming in today. My name is Jack, and we're holding this group on behalf of an exciting new fast food restaurant, Burgerback. Now, before they tasted the burgers, I'll be honest, I was a little vain, and I added a question to see how much people would like my logo. So, before you is the official Burgerback logo, and I want to ask you all, what are your initial thoughts about the logo? It's lame. It's lame. <laughs> <laughs> you said no, we, we want that. <laughs> <laughs> bland, okay. Look at his fucking face. Oh, that's Simpsons. good. Interesting. I guess they just don't have um, an eye for logos. I guess they're just wrong. But it was finally time to taste the burgers. So burger A was a Carl's Jr. famous star. And burger B was one that we picked up from a local restaurant down the street. Both burgers had the same ingredients and were repackaged under the Burger Back logo. So we started by bringing Burger A out to the group. One of them compared it to a Burger King burger, and another person even said this. Kind of reminds me of a Finn Star from like Carl's Jr. Oh, Jamie Song. You said a, a what from Carl's Jr.? Uh, like the Famous Star? Oh, famous star. yeah, you're right. So he said it reminded him of a Carl's Jr. Famous Star, but he didn't say that it was a Carl's Jr. Famous Star. And then Burger B from LA Tavern was brought out to the group. It was immediately clear that they liked this burger much more than the last. I thought with the bread on this one is uh, it's a better bite. They thought the Carl's Jr. burger was bland, but the one from the local restaurant seemed to be a hit. After tasting both burgers, we asked the group to identify which one they thought was a fast food burger and which one they thought came from a local restaurant. One was fast food, yep. I think. One was fast food, and you think this one is the, the right. family owned? Yeah. Yeah. Well, nice. yeah, I agree. To my surprise, they identified the Carl's Jr. burger as a fast food burger and the burger from LA Tavern down the street as a local family owned restaurant burger. But I don't understand, IHOP and Chili's have been doing this, I thought this was easy to trick people. So we held a second group to see if the results would be the same, testing out two things. One, if they could identify the burger like the first group, and two, if one of them would finally be honest and say they liked my logo. And I just wanted to ask your um, honest opinion, what do you think about the logo? Basic, okay. I don't get the name of it. I need okay. more context. All I think is bar back. Like when it was like, what's a burger back? Kind of generic. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's um, it's a focus group, so you know they're gonna give their honest opinion, and sometimes people's honest opinions can be wrong or dumb or bad or wrong and bad and stupid and hurtful and mean. And after that, the focus group went the exact same as the one before it. They all unanimously voted A for fast food and B for local. So the second one I think is from the local. Is that kind of everyone's um, yeah. 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 thought here? So even though nobody stopped during the taste test and said, I think this is a Carl's Jr. burger, I think you're lying to me, I may have wasted thousands of dollars in disproving my own point. It seems that ghost kitchens aren't that deceiving because people can tell the difference between what's a fast food burger and what's a local chain burger, which is a huge bummer. Well, the point is, it doesn't matter, right? Because, like, the scam comes... Because you can't, like, put it in your mouth before you order it. Because I feel like I put the whole point of the video on this focus group, and now I feel like I've been proven wrong. Or, I lied. Because while Burger A is a famous star from Carl's Jr., LA Tavern is not a real restaurant. In fact, that photo you saw 
was a random building that I picked off of Street View. And the focus group did not correctly vote between what was a local restaurant burger and what was a fast food burger because Burger B was jack in the box this whole time. Both focus groups tasted two fast food burgers and incorrectly said that one was from a local restaurant. So I think it's pretty clear that I made everyone in that focus group look dumb. Now, yeah, uh, look, listen, that plot twist makes no sense. What I just said is still, like, none of it matters. Because ultimately, when you're fucking ordering on the phone or on your app, it literally doesn't matter. It's still fucking, you just don't know if it's shit is shit. Obviously, I'm joking because they aren't dumb. I lied to the people in that focus group about the food they were eating, and they believed me. And I also lied to you about the food I was feeding them, and you believed me. Because it is not a person's job when they pay for food to investigate whether they're being lied to or yeah, not. I have exactly. spent the first part of this year ordering food and then spending hours trying to figure out how it was made and what the story behind it was. It would be completely normal for a focus group to be held to test which burger tastes better from a company. You know what's not normal? Being part of a focus group where you're being lied to by a YouTuber who's trying to prove a point. Nobody would think that's what was happening. Much like if I went onto a delivery app and tried to order a burger from a local place, it would be insane for me to randomly assume that it's a Chili's or that it's from one building that has 44 other restaurants running out of it or that it's from some weird mobile trailer that has a bunch of explosions burning their employees. And I don't have a solution to this problem. I mean, what do I know? I'm a comedian on YouTube. That's like the lowest job in society. Now, I don't think this will happen, but I think at the very least, delivery app should add some kind of tag where you can see what's a virtual restaurant and what's a real brick and mortar place because if you're supporting a restaurant with your dollar to get some food in return the very least they can do is let you know where that food is coming from especially if it's like an IHOP or a Chili's or one of those mobile trailers in a Houston parking lot. Dude, I ordered tacos and I looked up the street view on Google and it was the fucking Winnebago from Breaking Bad. Yeah, ultimately, as if there was better regulation um, and better quality control, and lastly, if it tasted good, I don't think anybody would give a shit. But the fact that they are deceptive and offer low quality, because like, look, I'll be honest, it would suck for all the other restaurants that are getting like played, right? It sucks for all the other restaurants that are absolute. By the way, this is a fucking banger vid. Holy shit. I remember when merch used to be a hoodie or maybe a phone case if you were extra fancy. We were out here dropping burgers now. Yeah, that's literally the same principle, by the way. We are now drop shipping burgles. Um, it's true. It's the exact same thing. It's the exact, it's the exact, exact, exact same principle. It's the exact same concept. Um, surprised I haven't subscribed to. Eddie Bearback himself, dude. That's crazy. Um, when are we getting the 9-11 burger? Brother, if I was going to do drop shipping food, you think I wouldn't do Turkish food? Are you kidding me? That's insane. Easy clap. The issue is that it is really, really, really difficult to get, like, good Turkish food. And you guys know how much uh, effort... I put into even making merchandise and I don't even like making merchandise. I fucking hate it. Um, and then everybody yells at me. I would never be able to make like a legit type of donut. Like these places are not going to be able to support what I want to make. It would never, it would never be done that way.